have made it. This is What Happens in the Woods, a true crime podcast. I'm Jessica, your hostess, and Bryce is here working his uh, technological magic, but he's behind the scenes. So we have our first guest ever on the podcast. Uh, Say hello. Hello, everybody. So this is Mara. This is our oldest daughter, and uh, she's graciously consented to sitting down and doing this with me this week um which is kind of going to be a treat because all your dad ever says is okay Uh uh-huh every now and then i get a wow or he'll give a little chuckle but then sometimes he's so profound and he has these great thoughts and sentences it's it's rare well it is an honor hopefully i can do a little bit more reacting we'll see Yes, thank you, Mr. Funny Man. <laughs> okay, so Mara was actually behind the scenes uh, during, you know, kind of the infancy of the podcast. So she was actually running the social media um, until she, you know, couldn't anymore. So yeah, and then I took it over and I suck. So. <laughs> That's not true. That is, that's pretty much true. So anyway, she was, I mean, at the beginning, she was still a a part of it. We've kind of included everybody in the family in some way. At some point. Yeah. So throwing, you know, ideas off of people and now she's, you get to hear her voice. Well, and Olivia, yeah. So Olivia was on last week for just a little snippet. She actually introduced the, um, promo that we, that we added, um, for the podcast Nefarious New York. They I was listening to one of their episodes and I was really yeah, like this is something that's close to what we're doing just in New York. So really good. Um, you know, if you like us, you probably would like them too. Just a little shout out for them. But yeah, Olivia got to introduce kind of some, you know, info on what was going on with that. So at the beginning of the podcast that was uh out last, that is her voice. So that's our youngest daughter. So yeah, maybe Haley will get on here one day. Who knows? I don't know. You never know. Things happen. We're all starting our podcast careers now. Yes. Why not? <laughs> well, we didn't buy all this equipment for nothing. I mean, this is an investment. We we need to... One of you guys needs to set me up in the lifestyle that I deserve to be treated with. Well, we'll let you start that off. <laughs> all right. Fine. So kind of crazy, you know, that... We're near our end of the season. This is, you know, episode nine. We're going to hit episode 10. And that's kind of where we had said we were going to stop and evaluate and see how things were going. So it's just weird to think that like a few months ago, we were newbies at this and didn't know what the hell we were doing and trying to make a go of it. And now we have almost, we're so close, 800 downloads, just shy of it. You know, three months ago, I wouldn't have thought that was going to happen. So huge thank you to everybody. It's just still kind of blowing our minds. That being said, there's so many cases that I wanted to talk about. And it's been really difficult to choose who, you know, we would talk about in this first season. You know, I'll say that there's just definitely no shortage of cases, murderers, weird crimes in this area to talk about. Everybody just stay tuned for season two because there's a lot of cases that we you know, kind of put aside and said, yeah, they're definitely worthy, but we're going to talk about them later. So that is coming. We are going to do it. But these last two cases are ones that I knew right away that I was going to talk about in this season um, and, you know, do the research. So this week we're going to talk about uh, the Spokane serial killer, Robert Yates and his victims. So the other day we were watching documentaries. Yes. And they... It 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 takes a lot for me to be a little shocked now, I guess you would say. I'm, I'm almost a little desensitized. And there were quite a few moments where I was like, what the hell? Oh, my God. No. Yeah. I think we both were sitting there kind of like, whoa. Yeah. That's a little out there. You, yeah. Some of the information is just kind of, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy to think of. So I mean, research was pretty easy to get on Robert Eads, but there was some information in those docuseries that just... I, it was disturbing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say too, it's a little easy to get confused 
on the timeline and the charges. Yes. We had a hard time kind of following that. Um, it, it doesn't, I guess because there are some things that came out later. Maybe that's why. Um, so we'll kind of circle back to that and go over go over that. One thing I want to note right from the start is there were just huge similarities between Yates and Gary Ridgway, who is the Green River Killer. Very, very well-known serial killer in Washington. So they both frequently solicited sex workers and used them as easy prey. And they were both into necrophilia. Mm. Yeah. Uh, They both had family members that were, unfortunately, they inadvertently got involved, like kind of got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, and it was just, it was horrible to see the effects of all this on their, on the family. Yes. Not only the victim's families, but his family as well. It was just, it was heartbreaking. That was an interesting um, documentary too. the point of view of a show that we watched. That was more the, how the serial killers affected the families. Right. I, I did like those. Yeah, those would, that's definitely something that I think um, it doesn't get discussed. It's not shared as much when when you talk about s- true crime or serial killers and things like that. It everybody wants to know the information about the killer. Everybody wants to know well why could we look at this and say why did he do this or yeah. why did they kill or she kill or um, what was the reason? What kind of person were they like? But most times you forget that. These are people who seem normal. They have Mm -hmm. lives and they kind of are out and about in society. And I mean, Yates is a perfect, perfect example of that where he had this one persona that was portrayed to everybody on the outside. And then he had this complete different persona that ended up being the killer, but they were the same person. Just nobody caught on. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So that show that you're talking about, that was a uh, monster in the family. Yes. And it's on Lifetime Network. I did have to pay to watch it, but you can catch snippets on YouTube. I've seen some episodes available on YouTube. Um, this was from the first season. I think episode two was, yeah. was Yates. So really interesting watching that. Um, like Mara was saying, it's from the family perspective. All right, so we're going to start with Robert's life and then get into the crimes. So Robert Lee Yates Jr. grew up in Oak Harbor, Washington. He was born May 27th, 1952. Sorry, Mom, you share a birthday with a serial killer. (laughs) Really sorry. All the serial killers have to be Geminis. I don't know. Because they're crazy. Thanks. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, not sorry. I'm a Gemini. So, 1952, he's born to Anna May and Robert Lee Yates Sr. The family was just kind of your typical middle-class, church-going bunch. One account I read said that he had an unusual relationship with his mother and that she was domineering. I didn't... The the documentaries didn't mention that. No. So, it was one account that I read that, which, I mean, that's basic 101 serial killer. (laughs) What was the mother's mother son relationship like i mean i know that we heard that he was a mama's boy so yeah because he had a very hard time when his yeah. mom later got sick yeah so um there's that um his dad states that around age 16 he started being really moody and sullen but uh, they just kind of took it as normal teenage stuff that wasn't in either one of the docu series either no um the family was very outdoorsy. They went camping, they went hunting, they went fishing. They, they did a lot of stuff together. He was a good student. He was athletic. He was in disco plays and choir. Um, he graduated with, you know, good grades. He was just kind of your all American Joe, I guess you would say. It is confirmed though, that unfortunately at the age of six, he was molested by a 12 year old, uh, neighborhood boy. There's really no telling what that did to him. It, it, or how he handled it. Cause it's not even something that he spoke of until I think they said he, when he got married. Yeah. And his dad, the way that his dad spoke about it, he was, he didn't think that that would have affected him in any way. Yeah. He didn't think that that led him to be a serial killer or any of that led to any of his behaviors. Yeah. Yeah. It was interesting how it was just like, well, and this happened. Yeah. He just briefly mentioned it. Yeah. And I, I found out, uh, cause Linda told me, yeah. After they were married. And I was kind of like, oh, 
Oh, okay. And you didn't think that was important to share? I mean, I guess not. Or well. even like get help for. Yeah, but it was the 70s. You didn't talk about shit like that. That's true. You There was tons of shame associated with anything like that. Yeah. It just, it wasn't discussed. So um, the fact that he eventually told somebody, I'm actually kind of surprised. Yeah. I, I will say. Um, but I definitely do think that that contributes to. That's your first sexual experience. It wasn't yeah. good. You, you're probably not going to have a better time with it yeah. <laughs> afterwards. What also didn't get mentioned was that Yates uh, was married to a woman prior to Linda. So he was married to Shirley Nylander in August of 1972 in Fall City, Washington. He started going to school in Walla Walla and he was going to be, uh, his major was pre-med. Hmm. So, um, it doesn't last long, neither, neither the marriage or, or his college career. Um, by March of 1974, they separated. Don't know why, but she was like, I'm, I'm out. I'm going to go back to my parents' house. So about how old were they? Then? Um, so he was born in 52. This is 72. He's 20. Hmm. He's 20 years old. And then, yeah, two, not even two years later, they're divorced or she's filed, you know, for separation and divorce. Interesting. Yeah. So um, he leaves school without a degree. Then a month later, he and Linda Brewer file for a marriage license. So that's June what? of 1974. It's barely a month that the divorce papers from Shirley got filed. How long did they even know each other? When um, did they even meet? A while because next thing you know, she's having a child in December. What was he doing? Every fucking thing. <laughs> so, I mean, she, yeah, Linda just kind of comes out of nowhere. One minute he's separated from Shirley and the next minute he's applying for a marriage license to Linda. They get married in July, but it's not legal because his divorce is not finalized. Oh my gosh. Right. So I don't know why, I don't know why they did that. Cause it, it wasn't going to be legal. There was no way. Um, the divorce was finalized in August, so that if they had just waited a month, it would have been legal. So they had the ceremony, but they they aren't married. Or not. For not. <laughs> but like I said, uh, their their oldest daughter is born in December. So they had to have been they at were. least known since February. And so they were, uh, you know, trying to get that marriage in there. Right. I don't want to I don't want to seem like I'm talking shit because Mara <laughs> Mara was six months old when we got married. It happens. I'm not judging. It's fine. I mean, in my view, uh, babies aren't a reason to get married. Yeah. You should get married because you want to start a family with somebody. I, I understand that, you know, typically the babies would come after that, but shit happens. So, you know, it's not the in my mind, having a baby is not the reason you get married. You get married because you love somebody and you want to spend your life with them. Back in then, in the seventies, that that wasn't how the shit was done. Yeah, you you got married. You you did what your you know responsibility was, and that was to get married. But he was married. But he was. Married. And it sounds like he might have been messing around. I'm sure he was messing around the entire time. Mm, that's true, considering yeah. his later right habits. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> We're jumping the gun, Mark. Sorry, sorry. You already know too much. So usually your dad doesn't know <laughs> shit about what I'm talking about. Maybe that's why he's like, oh, uh-huh. Okay. Because he, he doesn't credit. have any, he doesn't have anything to Does say. context. Right. So uh, eventually they do have a legal marriage two years later <laughs> in 1978. Sadly, his mom passed away about this time. She had been fighting cancer for a long time. And she, you know, lost her fight. Uh, one of the documentaries, like I said, we watched said how close he was, that he was mama's boy and that her being sick and, and dying probably really fucked him up. It, I'm sure it contributes yeah. to his mental state and, and what he's doing. It, there's no way of knowing because he never states why he doesn't even go into why he ever committed any no. of these crimes. 